Okay, in this video we want to review sketching linear graphs. So in order to sketch a straight line, we need two points. Two points enable us to then get out a ruler, join them up and we've got the straight line. Okay, It's conventional for all graph types, linear, quadratic, cubic, hyperbola, truncus, whatever. Every single graph type we'll ever draw, and we'll draw a lot of them this year, we always mark axis intercepts. The question doesn't need to specify that. If the graph is crossing an axis, it should be very clear what the coordinates of that point are. Okay? So therefore, we need to calculate the x and y intercept. So even if you use the, x, the y intercept and the gradient to calculate two points, you still need to find the x intercept anyway. So why not just use the y intercept and the x intercepts as your two points and then join those up with a straight line? I want to talk through, I know most of you will be familiar with um, sketching linear graphs, but I want to talk through a number of things that I, I think are really important that too many students aren't very good at doing as we work through these examples. Okay, so the first equation is given in gradient intercept form. So the gradient is 2 and the y-intercept is 4. Okay, but I need to calculate the x-intercept anyway. I'm going to calculate that before I draw, draw anything. One of the things I find students love to do is when they see this, the first thing they do is, oh, great, sketch a graph. And they get out a ruler and they draw a nice big square set of axes and maybe they spend a lot of time drawing a big elaborate scale on it da -da -da, before they've calculated anything. Forget all of that. Work out what your graph is going to look like before you draw a suitable set of axes. Okay, it doesn't need to be perfectly square. All right, so we know the y-intercept is four. Let's get away from just remembering people develop bad habits here. The y-intercept isn't isn't just the number on the end. Students have problems with that down the track when I give them, you know, this quadratic, and they tell me the y-intercept is two. No, it's not. The y-intercept is the value of y when x equals zero. In this equation, when you let x equal 0, you don't get 2. Okay. In this equation, when you let x equal 0, you do get 4. Okay. So it is the number on the end because when we let x equal 0, y is equal to 4. Okay. Essentially what's happening is that, I don't need you to write that out, I just want you to be aware of what, what's happening. Get used to coordinates. Okay. VCAA, every time they ask you to sketch a graph in a, in a VCE exam, will always ask for the intercepts to be labelled with coordinates, for key features to be labelled with coordinates. And if you don't label them with coordinates, they're wrong. If it never specified, if it just said draw the graph and you label with them, them with coordinates, they won't be wrong. Okay, please get in the habit of always labelling your graphs with coordinates. You build that habit now. When you're there in the VCE exam, you won't even think about it. It's just something you always do. Okay, that's what we want. All right, x-intercept. Um, we let y equals 0. Negative 4 equals 2x. And so x is negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2. So negative 2, 0. All right, so now thinking about... My x in, where my y-intercept is and where my x-intercept is and drawing a suitable axis. I'm not going to draw out a big elaborate scale. Okay, I'm just going to think about, I'm going to aim to cross my y-axis somewhere up here. My x-intercept is um, about is half of my y-intercept. So I'm going to aim to cross my x-axis somewhere about here. I'm not going to draw in those points. That's literally just what I'm thinking. Okay, I wouldn't even draw in those circles. I would just draw in a line that does that and I would label those points as 0, 4 and 2, 0. Oh, it's negative 2, 0. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> after all that. So somewhere up here and somewhere down here, draw in a straight line, 0, 4 and negative 2, 0. So you notice the problem you have is if you rule out your axes and you very carefully, you know, one, two, three, four, and then you get your ruler out and you just slightly miss those points, you actually now actively have a graph that does not have an x-intercept at negative two. All right, so just draw the line in and then label the point where it crosses. Okay, there's nothing to say that the scale has to be the same on both axes. You could draw that graph and that could be zero, four, and that could be negative two, zero. There's no problem with that because there's nothing else on this scale to say it's fine for us to say okay well the scale on this axis is that whereas the scale on this axis is that the problem would arise if you were then trying to draw a different graph and then you tried to draw something else also up here and you tried to say that that was two or or even that you know this point here was two and your scale became inconsistent on the what 
inconsistent within the one axis. Okay, so I don't need lots of ticks. I don't need not lots of numbers. I just need an axis and the points labelled with their coordinates. When you're asked to label the x and y intercepts, it doesn't mean writing y intercept here. A y intercept is the point where the graph crosses the y axis. We understand that's what's happening here. Graphically, that's what's happening. You don't label it as the y intercept, you label it with the coordinates. Where is the y intercept is what we want to know. We know that's the y intercept. Where is it is what we're trying to find out. Okay, example two sketch the graph of 3x plus 2y equals 10. Now, in my experience, 7 out of every 10 students will, the first thing they'll do when they see this is try to rearrange it to gradient intercept form, which is a complete and utter waste of your time. 7 out of 10 of you will try to rearrange it to that form, and of the people that try to rearrange it, at least 6 out of 10 of them will do it wrong. Because it's going to end up with fractions and you'll muck it up. If you arrange it to, rearrange it to gradient intercept form, you're going to get y equals negative 3 on 2x plus 5. So y intercept will be 5 if you did that correctly. Great, finding the gradient is going, sorry, finding the x intercept is going to require some fraction work that you'll probably stuff up um, and then you'll have the wrong x intercept. And you completely wasted your time anyway. There's no fractions required here whatsoever. This is the easiest form to find both x intercept, both axis intercepts, okay? y intercept is when we let x equal 0 which means we just get 2y equals 10, and so y equals 5. x-intercept is when we let y equals 0, which means we're going to get 3x equals 10, so x equals 10 on 3. 10 on 3 is a fraction in simplest form. We don't need to do anything more with than that. You might want to think about it as being 3 and 1 third, just to get an idea of where it is, but we don't need to do anything more than that. Okay, So we're going to have... Think about where our axes are going to go, something like that. That's going to be 10 on 3, 0, and that's going to be 0, 5. If you're not very good at drawing a vaguely straight line by hand, use a ruler. Okay, Straight lines should be straight, so use a ruler or the edge of your CAS lid um, if you need to. Okay, graphs with only one intercept. So the key thing is, is that the graph isn't fully defined unless we have at least two points marked on it. Otherwise, we can, you've got to be able to think about there must be enough information labelled on the graph so that someone could just look at the graph and come up with the equation. So that is two points. Okay? And conventionally, we need to have the axis intercepts. So we need those, those two points. Um, so the issue we have here is when a graph only has one intercept is that we only have one point. So you must then include a second point. Okay. So if I'm sketching the graph of y equals negative 3x, we can think about that as being negative 3x plus 0. There's a y-intercept of 0 and a gradient of negative 3. So you should be able to sort of think through what that looks like straight away. It's sort of doing something like that. y-intercept 0, gradient's negative 3. If the gradient's negative 3, for every one step across, I go three steps down. And so this would be the point, sorry, 1, negative 3. So there's my two points, origin and that point there. Okay. Um, if you have trouble with that, you know, you might want to think about, all right, the y-intercept, you let x equal 0, be y equals 0. Your x-intercept, when you let y equal 0, oops, sorry. It's also going to be 0. So the problem here is both the y-intercept and the x-intercept are the same point. And so then we need another point. Um, you can just let x equal whatever number you want. Let x equal 1 y is going to be negative 3 times 1, so negative 3. So we go through the point 1, negative 3. You could let x equal negative 1 and get y equals positive 3. You could let x equal 75 if you want and find that y equals whatever the negative 3 times 75 is, 2, negative 225, and mark that point. It doesn't matter, but you need to have two points, and when your x and y intercepts don't provide you with two different points, you need to calculate an extra point, however you want, using the gradient by subbing a number in, however that, whatever that is. So we're going to have origin and 1, negative 3. You don't need to label the origin with coordinates. That's just a convention. We all understand what that is. You can. There's nothing wrong with doing so, um, but you don't have to. Okay, so that would be optional to have that marked. I would be sure to be clear about the fact that the graph's actually going through that point. Um, so if you want to be clear by labeling it, 
Okay, then we have graphs of this sort of form, so y equals 5. If we think about this in gradient intercept form, that's 0x plus 5. So a gradient of 0 and a y-intercept of 5, therefore a horizontal line at 5. The other thing you, want, you can think about is this is the graph of all of the points that have a y-coordinate of 5. So this point at 0, 5 has a y-coordinate of 5. That's the y-intercept, I definitely want to mark that. 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5. 3.25, 8, 5, negative 1, 5, negative 25, okay? So all the points along here have a y-coordinate of 5. And so therefore, people get confused because they think, oh, y-axis is vertical, so y equals something will be vertical. But what the equation of the y-axis is x equals 0, okay? I would label the y-intercept, and I would actually tend to label it with its equation, a horizontal line, just to be clear. You could put a second point on, that could be a way you could do it. 3, 5, for example, or any other point, doesn't matter. Two points, or just put the y-intercept and, and the equation. x equals 4, again, that is the point where all of the x-coordinates are 5, oh, sorry, are 4. So here's the point 4, 0. But then there's the point 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 8, 4, negative 0.5, 4, negative 6.3, whatever it might be. Okay. So all of the points along that vertical line have an x coordinate of 4. x axis, y axis. Tips for sketching graphs. I think I hope they've mentioned most of these throughout. You must always label the x and y intercepts of any graph doesn't matter what the question says, that's default. You you have to have enough information on your graph for someone to be able to look at your graph and work out the equation. As I said, this does not mean that you write x-intercept or y-intercept next to the point. You label it with its coordinates. We want to know what the location of the x and y-intercepts are. The second dot point, it's good to get into the habit of always labelling intercepts with coordinates. As I said, in Year 12, the examiners will often specify the need for coordinates. In fact, I would say always specify the need for coordinates, and students frequently lose marks for this careless error. It's something you won't even need to think about if you make it a habit now. A straight line is defined by two points, so at least two points must always be shown. So particularly um, where the x and y intercepts are the same point or a horizontal or vertical line. In the case of a horizontal or vertical, I'd say one point and just label it with the equation would be enough. Um, they're slightly special cases. Straight lines should be straight. Use a ruler if you struggle with that. Graph should be a decent size so that all information can be read clearly. Don't be stingy. You know, I see like students, you know, they draw these graphs and then they, then they draw, you know, this tiny little pathetic thing here with an X and a Y intercept here, you know. Why not just draw that like that so we can actually see it? Okay. Make it clear. Um, you've got, you know, not short of paper. I know, you know. We want to be environmentally sustainable and all of that, but they don't, they don't need to be huge. But just, you know, I mean, I didn't draw those things. They were the same size. It's about how you think about your scaling, you know, that sort of thing. Um, graphs should be neat. Use a pencil so that you can correct your mistakes, okay? In um, the VC exams, if you have a graph, it's a bit different with linear graphs, but if you have a graph that sort of does that, that's 10, that's 15 different lines, that's not one straight line, it wouldn't earn full marks, there'd be shape issues there. Um, you know, if your straight line curves, it's not a straight line, you would lose marks for shape there. Um, if, you've, if you've drawn a nice neat scale and that's where you want your y-intercept to be and this is where you want your x-intercept to be and then you ruled the line that went there, there's an issue here, fit, rub it out and fix it, make sure that your line goes through the points that you want it to go through, okay? Their, um, graphs, when it comes to assessments, graphs are easy places to earn marks, but really easy places to lose lots of marks if you're just really careless about it. So take some care, use a pencil, particularly if you struggle with being neat, use a ruler um, and get it right. Okay. 